Well, hey, we're in the studio again with Rhett Wimmer. We're talking about Alzheimer's and dementia, and, and these videos are for people who are caring for someone. Great introductory videos. In fact, if you missed the first one, we'll put a link to that right here. But Rhett, we're gonna to talk today about some of the common causes of Correct. dementia. Correct. So as a reminder, dementia is a very broad umbrella term. Mm -hmm. And underneath that umbrella, um, there are so many different causes, um, diagnoses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so some of the leading ones maybe we'll go through. Number one is Alzheimer's. It's, right. the, most, it's the most well known. Um, it's, it's the one that we certainly know lots about. Um, but also is one that people sometimes tend to use in place of dementia. Mm -hmm. They'll use them back and forth. A lot of overlap there, mm -hmm. but with Alzheimer's, there are a few things that are happening. Um, uh, number one is what we call plaques. Um, these are proteins that start to build up um, at very abnormal mm -hmm. <laughs> amounts um, mm -hmm. inside the brain. You also have tangles that are happening. Um, the, these things collectively start to um, uh, collect in small locations throughout your brain and then just gradually spread and spread and spread mm -hmm. um, as the disease progresses. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what, what happens um, that is probably important to understand as we're talking about this, um, this, is, this is brain failure. What, what's happening in your brain is brain failure. Um, and from the, so, the sign of that first symptom mm -hmm. um, until what I like to call graduation day mm. um, is, is typically about eight to 12 years. That's kind of your average. Um, but during that time, someone will lose um, uh, about a third of their brain matter, mm. um, maybe more in some cases. And so it's literally that your brain is dying. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, that's buildup of protein. Um, what will also happen, similar buildup of proteins, is when we talk about Lewy bodies dementia. Now, mm -hmm. Lewy bodies is what I believe uh, my grandmother had, though it wasn't specifically diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it starts off with um, proteins uh, covering the surface of your brain. Mm. Um, what you start to see initially is lots and lots of falling. Um, uh, in addition to those falls, something that's kind of unique and specific to uh, Lewy body's dementia is the prevalence of visual, visual hallucinations, mm. um, and more specifically, children and animals. I remember grandma often saying, oh, look at that beautiful yellow dress on that girl. It's, yeah, that's beautiful, grandma, you know. <laughs> um, uh, that's something that happens. Um, and so this is a separate is this, cause This is a separate Alzheimer's. cause. I'm sorry, I should, well, I should separate it. Alzheimer's is one cause and Lewy body's dementia is a separate is a disease altogether. Separate di disease altogether, but separate diagnosis. But they both diagnosis. lead to dementia. Mm -hmm. Exactly yeah. right, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, Another cause yeah. uh, would be what we call vascular dementia. Okay. Um, and that not, not necessarily um, a, a buildup of some mm -hmm. additional matter in your mm -hmm. brain, but is the result of insufficient blood flow to your brain. Mm. Uh, what's very common when you have vascular dementia, um, which is perhaps the second uh, leading cause of mm -hmm. dementia, is um, being incredibly labile. Those emotions are all over the spectrum. You mm -hmm. ask mom, how are you doing? And she bursts into tears. Mm. The best thing to do in that particular situation is give her a minute to calm down mm. and then to just come back and start over again. Mm. Um, uh, with each one of these individual diagnoses, there are appropriate ways to respond, um, appropriate ways to, to, to help that specific individual. Mm. It's important, one of the recommendations that I would make is when it is that you um, uh, meet with your initial primary care physician. They're going to run you through some questions. Who's, who's the president? What year is it? What season? Those sorts of things. Um, but they won't be able to likely come up with a specific diagnosis mm. in order to help know what's really going on. In order to do that, the number one recommendation that I can give is to see a specialist, get a good evaluation, which is very lengthy. But once you've determined what the actual diagnosis is, it helps you know, one, is this something that perhaps we can combat? Is there a mm -hmm. medication mm -hmm. um, that will help slow this down? Now for Alzheimer's, the leading cause, there is no cure presently. Um, but for others, there are some things that you can do. Mm. Likewise, with each of these individual diagnoses, if you can pinpoint it, then you can know, okay, here's what's down the road. Mm -hmm. Here are the specific things with this diagnosis that we as a family should be doing to help grandpa um, uh, be prepared. Mm -hmm. 
So that I guess that's the question for people watching this video. Like, you you recognize signs of dementia, Correct. which is the broader term. Mm -hmm. What does it really matter if you know the specific cause of it? It's Correct. important. Yep. You're saying. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because it really helps to determine the treatment um, that you can go through. Yep. So just one more question then. You mentioned there's no cure for Alzheimer's. There's not. So what what is for someone who does have that diagnosis? What is what is the recommendation for that family? For that family, a um, few things that I can say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, number one is to do your research, to understand what's going on in their brain. Something that's kind of interesting is, uh, one example, there's others that we could talk about, is as, as Alzheimer's begins to progress, the, the brain begins to stop kind of firing in those places that it normally does really well. Um, for example, in your frontal lobe here, that area of your brain that tells you not to say that horrible thing that you just thought about that person, yeah. uh, <laughs> it stops working um, as well as it once did. Yeah, yeah. Um, you start saying things uh, that you wouldn't say. You start using all sorts of vulgar terms you never would have, mm. uh, racial slurs, and the list goes on and on. Mm. Um, um, but uh, another part that starts firing is impulses. So not only have you 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 been <laughs> your capacity to stop giving in to those impulses diminished, but you also have more impulses that are firing in that mm. part of your brain. Mm. Um, that's just one of many things that you need to understand because dad's not being difficult because he's intentionally trying to make this hard for you. His brain is dying. Um, he no longer has the faculties to function as he previously did. And that's why educating yourself mm -hmm. on Alzheimer's as one example is so crucial because yeah. it teaches you where they're coming from yeah. and then how to interact with them. Yeah, that's good. And I would say probably not just educating yourself, but educating your family, mm -hmm. the extended, the kids, yep. the grandkids, yep. Yep. the more people that can really understand these issues and, and really know what's going on with grandma or grandpa probably the better it is for everyone coping with it and yep. and really making it making the most of those those that final decade however long it's going to be that's exactly yeah. right yeah. one thing that i might add on that same note when we talk about family pulling together mm -hmm. is um there are things that you can do collectively as a family to try to make this as as painless as possible mm -hmm. um, and that is by creating meaningful moments um, as often as you can together as a family. Mm. Um, it's super important as the disease progresses um, to make sure that you have a good history of that individual, mm. of, of activities, hobbies, um, and old habits that were meaningful and created a sense of purpose and identity for mm. that individual, that you can pull out those familiar sights, those pictures, um, familiar sounds and mm. smells in order to help help that individual reminisce. Um, the, the, um, the power that smell has, for example, of that apple pie mm -hmm. to bring back all of those great Thanksgiving memories at mm -hmm. grandma's house, for example, mm -hmm. um, can create really positive, meaningful experiences for you as a family as you're getting together mm -hmm. with grandma and grandpa as this progresses. Yeah, that's good. And that's, I think that's probably a great topic for our next video. Yes, and we'll do, <laughs> there lots of things, ideas you got yeah, there. Yeah. We'll do lots, uh, lots more on this topic, but I think that, that's good enough for now as you talk about this with your family. And uh, again, use those questions below to talk about it. Check us out in the next video where we'll continue to dive into Alzheimer's, dementia, and give you helpful, useful conversations so that you can move forward with this together as a family. We'll see you in the next video.